This is the overview and tutorial video for Poyomi Video Shader. So basically how it works is you use the video player like you would normally, but the video player then propagates or like it sends the texture to all of the other shaders in the world. All of these screens actually do different things. You can see the global illumination over here, the screens lighting up the ground. You can actually see the pixels on the ground, as well as on all the screens when you get really close. For example, this is a CRT screen, and you can see you can sort of see the scan lines, hopefully, and you can really adjust the settings so the scan lines work however you want. They actually do go from left to right slowly, and then the pixels fade out. There is projector modes, so you can use it like a projector. Uh, the room's a little bit bright, so your projector's not going to work very well. You have the TN panel, where if you like look up at it, it sort of messes. Or if you look up at it, the colors get higher contrast, and if you look down at it, they'll get lower contrast. And then if you go to the side, it actually shifts the colors like a TN panel. This one's just an LCD panel, so you're not going to get like deep blacks with this. Uh, this one is the OLED as well as that one, and these three, there's some basic masking, and this one is pretty much what a default video player looks like. It's still using the shader, but that's that. And you can do cool stuff like, it's on my socks. So the video is actually playing on my socks right now. It's kind of hard to tell because the video doesn't have a lot of movement. Oh, there you go. So it's pretty neat. And let's get into the settings. Before we get into the settings, this is available to all $10 plus patrons right now. If you want to check it out, there's a link in the description below. And if you want to come to this world and try it, you can just go to Poyomi TV Test. Give it a try before you buy. All right, now let's do the settings. The settings for this are fairly straightforward, so this shouldn't be a super long video but you know they always seem to get a little longer than I intend so I'll try to go fast so first thing you want to do when you're using this is if you go into your video texture settings there's actually a video debug here so obviously you don't want it to be super bright white like that I'm just gonna grab a random texture like this and now you can see the screen is using this the reason you need this is because you're not gonna be able to test the video unless you're actually in the game so this just kind of gives you something to work with. And then you can come in here, you can add a mask. So if I just search for noise, you can mask out parts of the video if you want. And it'll show the texture underneath. This has the full tune shader, like most shaders I make. It doesn't, the, having the tune shader in it does not slow it down, just so you know. It, it, like, it slows it down a little bit, but it's not going to cause a huge issue because anything you're not using is not going to be loaded. So first things first, let's cover the pixel texture. So I include a few pixels, oops, just called pix underscore whatever. So there's LCD, IPS, CRT, OLED. I'm just going to pick LCD and by default it's just going to be massive like that. So you want to set the resolution. I think the resolution actually defaults to 1280 by 720, not how you saw it there. And then if you get in close, you can actually see the pixels. And they do work properly-ish. They're not perfect. But if I change to, say, where's the debug? Here we go. If I change the picture, you can see that the pixels do actually light up and get darker based on the image on the screen. So if I am right here, that's kind of like a bright spot, but if I go up here into the blue area where there's not a lot of colors, you see the blue pixels are a little bit brighter than the green pixels are basically off. They're not all the way off because there's still a little bit of green in there, but you get it. So you can tile the video. I think right now, I, you, so you can't tile if you're pixelating to the resolution. And what pixelating to the resolution does is it basically, it takes this picture and then kind of makes it so that it, it's chunky and each spot is like one pixel. So if I pixelate it 
or if I take this and I set it to some low resolution like 128 by 72 you can see when I pixelate it, it's probably gonna look really bad yeah so it actually pixelates it so that it matches the pixels now it's not gonna work for all the pixels because some of them are really complex but if you just want these basic LCD pixels you can totally do this and as you change the resolution it will get less blurry and if you don't want that at all you can do that now the pixels are entirely optional you don't need them you can make it look like a normal video player and you'll see that it gets brighter when you remove the pixels and that's just because the pixels have black in between them so you're not going to get as bright of an image as if you just have a giant emissive texture so there's the mask we covered that you can pan the mask we did not cover that so if I had this mask, for example, you could just set a pan speed and then it would pan. And if you had a normal texture underneath it like this, you would see the texture underneath and then the video where it's being cut out. So if I pick a more obvious texture like this, you can see the texture underneath and the video where the mask is white. So black is no video and white is video. I'm just going to remove this. So there, there are six video types. There's LCD, TN, CRT, OLED, Game Boy, and Projector. And I tried to get them as close to their real life counterpart as possible. So if I click this, this is right now set to Game Boy. So I'm going to turn on the debug mode and I'm going to grab just a random texture again like this. Now you'll see that the texture looks pretty weird. That's because it's actually using the brightness of the image to sample this gradient. So say I wanted darks to be black and lights to be white. I could do this. And then if I wanted to kind of have a smoother gradient, maybe I wanted a black and white image, I could do that. Or I could invert the image and you probably noticed it was called Game Boy. That's because I included the Game Boy colors. So if we pick the Game Boy ramp, you're gonna get those Game Boy colors. And then if you pixelate to resolution and lower the resolution to something small, you get that sort of Game Boy look. Now it'll look better in game obviously, but it works and you can change the image around and try other stuff. It's pretty neat. So that covers that. The individual settings here, I'm not going to cover all of them. Basically LCD has a backlight so it can't go purely black. Uh, TN has color shifting. CRT has scan lines that go across. I can show you those because they're actually interesting. So we can go into the CRT settings down here, the CRT options. Uh, we're going to need to enable a texture, so I'm just going to grab one like this. Now it looks like it's going pretty crazy right now. You can lower the refresh rate quite a bit, so it slows down, go even slower. And then I'm going to lower the resolution so you can really see the scan lines. And now you can actually see, if I lower it even more, you can see the scan lines actually go across the screen and then the pixels fade out. So the pixel fade time is based on how long it takes to do an entire frame. So if you set this to 0.9, the screen is going to be 90% lit. If you set it to one, it means it will, by the time the pixel hits a pixel it already drew last frame, it will be um, fully dark. And if you want it to look sort of CRT, you can set it to like 1.9 and then increase the frame rate and you'll kind of get that like scan line look. So what's happening here is it's just always lit, but there's certain parts that are darker right before the pixel refreshes. It looks pretty neat. Change this back because it was an example. And that covers the CRT settings. So there's panning, tiling, and offset. They work about how you would expect. You can pan 
maybe you can not ban. <laughs> okay, tiling works. All right, I'm gonna have to look at that. The offset is just a texture offset, simple enough. You can adjust the saturation, you can lower the saturation, you can contrast boost. It's pretty neat. So you could totally have all of these hooked up to a UI in your world. So if you wanted to increase the contrast a little bit, or you had a specific video that looked really good with higher contrast, like a like an OLED demo or something like that, you can do that. And you can change the UVs. So if I had, say, this is just a plane, and I wanted, I didn't want it to cover like the entire plane like you see here. I just want it to cover a separate area so I can go into Blender and I can make a second UV and then change the UV of the screen to say UV1, which is the second UV because it starts at zero, and then it just maps it to this UV. And you'll find that a lot of shapes in Unity have multiple UVs you can mess around with, the basic ones especially. So if I were to enable this and then just add like a random image on there, if I switch the UV for this, it'll change pretty dramatically just because a lot of stuff has different UVs. I think that basically covers the shader. Now I'm going to cover how to get it to actually work because your basic video player is not going to just work out of the box. You need some adjusted settings and I have included a just a basic prefab that you can drop in your world. You can just drag this video player into your world and it will just work. So if I go over to the shader, I have a million folders open. If I go to Poyomi shaders right here, I go to Patreon and into the Poi video file or folder, you can see video player prefab here and there's just a prefab. You can drop that into your world wherever you want and it will just work. That's all there is to it. And once you press play, it'll go to everything using this texture as long as enable video is selected. Clamp to UV is just clamps to your UVs so it does not leave the UV. <clears throat> so if you have like a second UV map I guess you can it would generally still go over the edge but with this it will not. So you can see how there's like a second UV in the background and, and if you clamp it it sticks inside. All right so how this video player actually works is sort of complex. Um, it was actually set up, I got a lot of help from Scruffy Rules. I will link to his GitHub in the description, but I can show you what it looks like real quickly. He basically has the code for implementing this in other shaders and the files you need. It's a pretty good explanation. So feel free to check that out. He's done a lot of cool stuff for this game and he helps me out all the time. So how this works is in the spawn video somewhere, let me just find this sync video player. So right here in the sync video player there is a render texture and you can see the target texture right here that is this texture. So if you wanted to change your video settings or like the texture settings that's showing up on everything, you can mess with this and it will change for everything. So the video renders to that texture and then it sort of uses the stuff that Scruffy made to pass that texture to all of the shaders in the world. And if the shader has the specific naming convention so like this one has there's a a variable in the shader named whatever the texture is named and it'll pass into that variable and then you can draw it on your shader so this has the full tune shader you, as you saw in the game let me see if i can find the game 
when I look down, I can see the video on my pants. And there's lots of cool stuff that you can do with this. So say you had a world where you had like a video player in one place, but you wanted to take TVs around the room or you wanted like an iPad you could take around and watch videos on. You can totally do that or project videos on the environment or whatever you want. It's kind of how the Volt Club works if you've been there. So it's pretty neat. And there's a few maps that are already using this tech. So if you put this shader on your avatar and go to Room of Rain, for example, it'll play the videos on your avatar. It's a neat little thing. It's a popular map, and I hope more map makers start using this. I think that basically covers everything. So if you have any questions about this or anything else, I'll leave a link to my Discord in the description below. Feel free to check it out. The shader is available right now to all $10 plus patrons. And there's also a link for that in the description below. Thank you for watching. Hope you learned something.